how to write a unique resume using this free AI chatbot called Perplexity AI. This tool summarizes search results, focusing on information retrieval and research rather than ChatGPT's human-like dialogues. And to get started, I first want you to download my free resume template via the link in the description. Now I'm heavily promoting these matching resume and cover letter templates because they are clean, simple and professional. And the good thing is, you don't have to pay me for this. Just add it to your card, enter your email address and click on get, then click continue without adding and select open template. Once redirected, you will arrive in my Google Drive. Now, if you open the single page version, you will find that you first need to log into your Google account before you can edit the file. Now, once logged in, go to file and download it as a Microsoft Word file or make a copy in Google Docs. Then press this button and select your own drive. Give the file a name, let's call it Perplexity Resume, but we will change it later on in this video. And then click Make a Copy. There you go. Now, let's start from the beginning and ask Perplexity, what is the best resume structure? Now, right off the bat, you can see it summarizes sources found in search. It even displays related topics that may be of interest to you. Now, we will use Perplexity's suggested format and start off with our contact information. So include your name, title or aspired job title, location, date of birth, phone number, email address, LinkedIn profile, and optionally a link to your portfolio. Now, if space is limited or you experience alignment problems, simply drag these invisible borders to maintain an organized layout, like you see me doing here. All right, so that brings us to the resume summary section. But first, I want to ask Perplexity, should I even include a resume summary? And press enter. Now, whether to include a resume summary depends on your experience and career situation. It differs for experienced and entry-level job seekers. Now, let's ask a follow-up question to get even more specific. Can you explain when to include a resume summary based on individual circumstances? Now, these detailed answers make it much easier to decide what's suitable. So pause the video to see what fits your situation. Now, let's start from scratch again and ask, can you write a resume summary based on this job description? Now, I've selected this vacancy at random, just as an example. Now, what you want to do is copy the job description and paste it into perplexity. Add some brackets to indicate the start and end points. And then press enter. Scroll down. Now, it's clear we still need to refine this answer. So let's instruct perplexity to add a metric with a time frame for context and keep the summary under 50 words. Now, it's nearly perfect, but it's time to add a personal touch. So here's what my final resume summary would look like based on the job description and perplexity's input. So you want to highlight your years of experience in the field, include a summary of results or a relevant recent quantified achievement, and express your commitment to leveraging your expertise to drive future success in the position and company you are applying for. That's exactly what they want to read. All right, next it's time to focus on the resume experience section. Start by asking, can you write a resume experience section tailored to this job description? Then you copy the relevant parts from the job posting and paste them into perplexity and press enter. Scroll down. All right, now let's refine it and ask, can you structure it according to the PAR method? This will organize your experience section into problem, action, and result. And then finally, ask it to include metrics and a clear time frame to provide context. Now, although the format isn't perfect, I think these examples should give you enough inspiration to write your own version. And based on these outcomes, here's what my experience section would look like. So you start each sentence with an action verb, mention the platform or project name and its problem, highlight the skills and responsibilities you use to resolve the issue, and include quantified results with a specific time frame to provide context to your experience. Now, let's take a look at the education section. Ask Perplexity, can you write a resume education section tailored to this job description? Now, copy the entire job description so it includes the required educational background and related keywords. Now, this way, it's easier for Perplexity to match it to your degree, certificates, or courses you may have completed. And then I want to ask it to match it to my bachelor's degree in international business. You see, Perplexity can highlight transferable skills, learnings, or coursework, making sure the education section stays relevant to the job role you're applying for. 
Now, if the response is too lengthy, you can ask it to keep it under 50 words. And there you go. Now, I would format it something like this because it's the perfect way to create an ATS keyword optimized education section. Then we arrive at the skills section. Ask perplexity, can you make a resume skills section based on this job description? Then copy and paste the job description and press enter. Now, if I'm being honest, I wouldn't include a skill section like this. These bullet points take up too much space and seem kind of generic. I would recommend keeping it short and incorporating some of these keywords, at least if they apply to you. So if I had to work with these listed skills, I would come up with something like this because it seems more relevant and structured without taking up too much space. Now, if you're applying for a highly technical job, like a software development role, you may want to place this section right at the top of your resume, because that's what tech recruiters tend to look at first before they continue reading the rest of the resume. Okay, now that brings us to the optional sections. <laughs> Depending on your background and the job you are targeting, you may want to add certifications, projects, extracurricular activities, languages, hobbies, or interests. Now, I like to sort of merge projects and interests so I can show both competence and the interest for the field at hand. Now, if you're unsure what projects to list, just ask perplexity. Can you make a resume project section based on this job description? And then you repeat the copy and paste process. Now, you can use these as inspiration to create your own project section, and I would recommend formatting it like this. So you start with the project name, your job role, the duration, the goal, and the results. Separate them using these vertical lines, which you can include by holding shift plus the vertical line symbol on your keyboard. You see, this project section is easy on the eye and doesn't take up too much space which is important as most of you should keep your resume to one page. Now, let's round things up by asking Perplexity, what is the best resume file type to send to recruiters? And as you can see, Perplexity recommends using PDF. With this template in PDF format, you won't have to worry about any ATS compatibility issues. So let's continue by giving the document a proper name. Start with your first and last name, followed by resume, then go to file, download and select PDF document. And there you have it, a clean, basic, yet professional looking resume. So that's how you write a unique resume using Perplexity AI.